Hello, hello, again. I could have actually started an hour ago. I was here ready to start. And yet I just could not push the button on the mouse to start recording. As I went deeper and deeper into the feelings that were coming up for me. And I'm going to give the title of this. I just changed it not too long ago. The new title is Deeper Exploration of Conflict and Trauma. What I've been reflecting on is a couple of things. The class last night that uh, we were doing at the New Way together, in which we're exploring more deeply our feelings. We were given an assignment to go back in our lives and look at the earliest conflicts we could remember. And we were given a sheet of paper to write down the conflict, to determine how we perceived life, how we perceived ourself in the conflict, what we felt, how we perceived people, how we perceived relationships, what did we want, what must we do, and what do we need. The first conflict that came to mind for me was when I was in kindergarten. I started when I was four years old, earlier than most people, because I was born before November 1st, the year that I turned five. And the rule then was, if that was, your, if that was the case with you, you started when you were four. And I was born in October, so I qualified to start at four years old. And I imagine that I was four when this memory came to mind, and I mean, it, it was instantaneous. I was in the kindergarten class, and outside the wind was blowing really, really hard, and I could see the trees moving back and forth. And I got carried away with with what was happening outside the window and I stood up in class and started blowing <sighs> like the wind. I was imitating the wind. Well, the teacher didn't like that very much. I guess she thought it was disruptive. And I had to stay after school <laughs> the first time in, in my life. And I felt that life was not fair, even hurtful. I recognized my innocence. I felt totally misunderstood and even rejected. I thought, well, people are mean. And relationships with people are, are meaningless. They don't have meaning to them. You can't figure them out. They're difficult to understand. I realized that I, from a very early age, I wanted to be accepted. And I wanted my innocence to be recognized by the people around me. I also realized that if I'm to get along in this world, I must follow the rules that I don't even understand what they are. They don't make sense, but, I, but somehow I've got to learn how to follow the rules that somebody else established. And I need to pretend that I do understand. I need to pretend that I agree with them. 
was hard for me to come up with the second trauma or the second conflict because several images of fights that I had had with my friends through the ages of probably 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 in that window of time pre-adolescence there were different times that I got into fights and I couldn't pick out a single one because there were several of them that were flashing in my mind as I as I went back but I realized that everything that I had felt when I was four years old in kindergarten I felt during this other time as well all the same same thoughts and feelings were coming up for me as I meditated on that period of my life where there was conflict And the third one came to me very quickly, too. It was the first time I asked a lady for a date. I was 17 years old, and I had newly gotten my driver's license. And I was rejected for my first date. And I remember her words to this day. You're not a man, you're a mouse. Same feelings, same feelings that I had when I was in kindergarten, when I was pre-adolescent, when I was now becoming an adult but still a teenager. And then I come home from the class and I have over a hundred emails waiting since I had been gone for over for 12 hours. I had to teach two classes yesterday in the World Religions class at the local college on New Age and Metaphysics, or on New Age Metaphysics. And then I had the class last night, and I didn't bother coming home because I wasn't going to drive a half an hour back home and a few hours later turn around and drive a half an hour back to Coco. So I stayed in Coco the entire day day the whole 12 hours and so I had a hundred over well over a hundred emails to respond to and one of them was a notification from Paige Bartholomew that she had a new video up and also she sent me a personal email as well but I watched her video on uh, about healing trauma and it's so correlated with with what we had just done, the exercise we had just done in the class, which was still fresh in my mind. And she introduced the concept of the trauma. And she says it's still in your body. And that's basically what we said in the, in the class last night. That these things don't just go away because we turn our minds and do spiritual practices. And these are, these get locked in our very tissue and our very flesh. And Paige pointed that out very clearly and gave some exercise. I actually went back this morning and watched the same video again, meditating once again, which is why I sat here at the computer for over an hour, just meditating and going over and over and over the stuff that's in my life. And realizing how accurate Sue was last night as she led the class and as Paige was in her video. But these things don't just get up and leave because we've recognized unity consciousness. We recognize some spiritual principles and we've done some wishful thinking. I realize that at the deepest level of my consciousness. These things have remained in me all of my life. And the idea that I am innocent in, in this whole game, this whole matrix that we're in, is absolutely accurate. And it's not only accurate for me, it's accurate for each of you. Every one of us 
is innocent in this game, blameless in this game. And yet, so many of us have taken the I'm not good enough and the blame and the shame. We've taken it on. We've internalized it. It has influenced our relationships because how we color the world, that life is unfair, that life is hurtful, we've colored the world that way. And the world appears as we've colored it. Now, does it appear that way because that's how we've seen it or do we see it because that's the way it is? Did the chicken come first or the egg? Which was first? Does it really matter? I mean, really. This ninth wave is all about healing. It's all about recognizing the deeper levels of our own being, our own souls, our own psyche, our ego, our wounded child. It's about recognizing all of these things and coming to a place not where we whitewash them and deny them and pretend they don't exist. That's not that's how we've played the game, but it's not the solution to the problem. It's not the solution. And the truth of the matter is we're being taken into a territory as a human family that we've never been before. Not in lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes of millennia. Recurring countless, countless reincarnations on this planet. Humans have carried these wounds. In our modern age, the first thing that we experience is we get slapped to breathe. Life hurts. It sucks. And we need to admit this to ourselves, that it doesn't seem fair that there doesn't seem to be justice. We need to admit that this is the world that we are living in. So many people in their spiritual practices want to live in la-la land and deny the reality of our deep wounds, of our trauma. But as Paige said, and as Sue said last night, we have to recognize that this is where we are and we have to Find the way to heal, whether it's concentrating on our little toe, as Paige said, or just reaching a place of forgiveness. Finding that place within ourselves. We have to find the way to heal these hurts, these wounds, these traumas that are in all of us. It's not just some of us, it's in all of us. And we're in this together. And this wave of universal consciousness, of unity consciousness, this wave in, in our evolution is the most important wave we've ever gone through. And we're gonna do it together by loving ourselves and loving each other enough to tell the truth. No more pretending. No more faking it till we make it. Truth. Hard, cold, deep levels of truth. We've got to reach that in ourselves because ultimately the truth will set us free. And keep going deeper and deeper, exploring the conflict and the trauma in our own life and finding the path to healing, not only individually, but collectively. Namaste. Namaste.